that because, like I said, I watched the Chicago game earlier this year. And it was one of those like 12 a.m. games or 12 p.m., whatever. Super early game, like one of them, like literally most people will be at work type of games. And that's why I'm cool. Like if you're going to do those games, have them on the league pass. Hopefully most people who watch the WNBA, you can at least still put your headphones in and watch them. I mean, listen to them if you can't actually just watch the game. And I do think realistically, I've seen a lot of, and I'm going to get back to the standards, but I've seen a lot of women get upset with the Seattle Storm's uh, broadcaster. And to me personally, my top favorite broadcasters in the WNBA, just team-wise, Cheryl Swoops is number one, period. Like, it don't matter. I'll take Cheryl Swoops over absolutely everybody. Um, and then to Seattle. And after Seattle, it will be Atlanta. I like but I like that energy that he brings. And I get it. Some people, and listen to what I'm saying. I understand, and this is one, I guess, the message that I would give to women who defend Angel Reese. You can't take everything personal. I get it. He was getting super spicy. When they got up, he was like, oh, this ain't Friday. You going home, we packing you up. He was talking ridiculous cash money. 81 grade A trash talk. I like that because if that was me, I would be the same way. So I'm not, I can't have my 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 panties in a bunch on that one. I can't be on my Cisco that thong, that thong, 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 literally hanging up your crack. Like you gotta let it rock, dog. He does he get because listen to what I'm telling you. If you follow the Connecticut Sun, who's one of the well, Connecticut Sun got the best, probably the best social media team because they talk extremely crazy when they win games. Like their captions be old. I'm talking about ridiculous. And let's be clear, the Chicago. Well, Scott do this. I mean, the Chicago Scott do the same thing like that when they beat this, this uh, the Seattle storm on Friday. They had the Jonah, don't matter about you. One, uh, what is it? One, one game, two game, three game, eight because literally the storm was going. They had an eight game winning streak on their home court and Chicago broke it. They talk crazy, so I'm not mad at him because I'm sure he may see it. Or if you searching certain things on social media, bro, listen, completely clear people who like. Angel Reese and the Chicago Sky talk crazy on social media, people, especially when they win. And because that's the persona and that's the aura that Angel Reese presents, and that's why we like her. So you can't be mad when, when they dish it out on their own. So I'm absolutely cool with the Seattle Storm dude just talking ridiculous. Like, it's cool. It's a part of sports. Like, if you are an actual sports fan, talking trash comes with sports. If you play 2K, it's no way, like, oh, I'm up by a dub. I'm going to be quiet while I'm up by a dub. Hell no. No, I'm gonna spy and do some shit. I'm gonna talk crazy to you. That's a part of sports, so you have to deal with that. So I'm not mad at him. He's still one of my favorite. I I was not upset about the way he was talking. I was I was a fan of it. The Seattle Storm deserve it because on Friday they lost. And I've listened to it. I'm telling you, I'm one of them people. If they would have won, because I forgot to do it on when they when they won the game on Friday. For people who don't know, the young lady Drew Lloyd that plays for the Seattle Storm, Kobe Bryant gave her a nickname, the Gold Mamba. I'll swear to God, if they would have won on Sunday, because I forgot to do it on Friday, if they would have won on Sunday, I promise you, I was going to play on the Mamba name. I'm not even going to hold you. I was going to sit here and get super crazy with it. I don't care if it's the Black Mamba, the Gold Mamba, White Mamba, whoever. It could be your Mamba. We smoke. I was going to talk like that. So I'm not mad at him for talking crazy, because that's exactly what you're supposed to do, dog. It's sports. So again, like I said... I'm not mad at it. It's a close race, and I understand that rookie of the year thing, for, especially for black people at this point, you almost feel like it's going to be your rookie of the year. So I listen to what I'm saying. I understand how exciting you get behind these things. And again, shout out to Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless may literally be one of the smartest men in sports media. Because let's be clear, Skip has took an L. Losing Shannon Shop probably is one of the biggest L's that you can take in sports history, sports media history. But he bouncing back because, again, I'm going to tell you, he see how all the other because and this is the, and this is the luxury of Skip being a old white man and he's built his he didn't earn his stripes and if one he's an old white man and he I think he's from Oklahoma and he's a Dallas Cowboys so he didn't with his stripes of being a, a good American white man he didn't already built that up so Skip noted I don't necessarily I don't have to pander to this audience I could literally I can see an opening because oh none of the black dudes are they not firm enough in this stance. Let me take it and I can get that audience that I built with Shannon back on my side if I go team Angel Reese and I'm gonna go with her by leading with stats so it don't seem crazy. It's not just my opinion. And I mean, of course, Skip Bayless is a OG of you some more stats and analysts. Like that's just what he do. When he talk, I don't care what sport he's breaking up, he got that paper in front of him and he's gonna read you for filth when it comes to them stats. So him reading and breaking down those stats when he's when he's telling you the reasons and the flaws in Caitlyn game and he kind of and it was so crazy because they had Rachel Nichols Rachel Nicholson on it today and she kind of was trying to compare like Caitlyn Clark struggles rookie her rookie season to Steph and the people were like in the comments was like bro Steph didn't get drafted number one what the hell are you talking about why are you even trying to compare the two like nobody like let's be clear and I say this all the time people really ain't start checking for Steph and putting Steph in that conversation until. 
they started winning championships. Or oh, realistically, you could look the year before that. When the year, the last year, Mark Jackson was the head coach. That's when people and Mark Jackson had to take a firm stance on. Oh, these are the best. This is the best uh, shooting back court of all times. Like after Mark Jackson made that statement, and most people respected that statement because we all know that he played with Reggie Miller. So after he took that stance, you get to kind of realistically know, like, oh, all right, Mark, he he not just saying anything because he played in a great back court with a great shooter himself. So him to say that, so it gave it a little bit more luxury. But let's be clear, people wasn't checking for Steph the way they check for Steph now. They wasn't checking for Steph like that his first five years in the in the NBA. So yeah, her trying to compare that is that's how you know that. Skip Bayless was doing what Skip Bayless do. That's what I say. When Skip, because he won his, his, we know that he can debate whoever. We didn't watch him debate Stephen A. Smith for years. You watched him debate Shannon Shop for years. So his debate game going to be OD. So when he pulling the stats and he's debating you as well, he going to smoke you up 90% of the time. It's not too many people unless you are very animated like the Shannon Shops and Stephen A. Smith. It ain't too many other people that you feel like you can, they can stand in front of Skip Bayless and go back and forth when he got his notes and he stat reading you and he is delivering at an amazing way. So again, like I said, he sees the opening where he found his new LeBron James and that's why I kind of got to give Skip some credit because it's like, oh, you're smart. You see, you see the chinks in the arm of everybody else who's in your league. None of them are even... Like they kind of on they too much on the fence, and he's like, mm, I'm cool then. Y'all stay on the fence, and you like his so bro, shout outs to Skip Bayless. That to me is just amazing because I'm watching him watch the field, and it was like all of y'all catering to this audience because you're scared of it. I don't have to because this is just who I am. I came out the I came out my mom's vagina, a white man from the middle of America. I don't have to pander to them, so I'm cool. I don't need that audience because they ain't gonna have they don't have no choice but to because I done built up so much rapport with them. They don't have no choice but to keep listening to me regardless if they don't like this take. And I keep telling men that I'm like, bro, you gotta realize you're only like two months away from football season again, so you can't don't lose all your sports credibility trying to defend this girl because then you're just gonna look nuts. So again, like I said, shout out to Skip Bayless. He see, he see where he can kind of, he's building his new LeBron James. God willing, he live a couple more years. This girl keep like, I can build, I can call her out on where her flaws is. So he kind of linked into the Angel Reese rookie of the year conversation. And again, shout out to Angel Reese for breaking Candace Parker record. That 12 straight double doubles. And she, of course, won that on Friday. They had, let's be clear, Chicago Sky came into Sunday's game on a two-game winning streak. They beat the Atlanta Dream. So that was for 11. And, and, and again, like I said, if you don't really watch the WNBA, and that's why I kind of don't argue with, you can't, you can't argue with people in the comment section because I'm sure, like I said, again, it could be a bot. So it could be people who just don't watch the games. If you just watch the highlights or listen to somebody narrative, then it's, you're going to take it for face value or whatever it is. But Tina Charles and just any of the women, like again, the to me, the most, and even if you just go with just Google, just Google the last maybe say 10 years of MVPs in the WNBA. I'm gonna sit here and say, I know for a fact the last five have all been bigs. So it's either um Joquil, uh Joquil Jones, she plays for the uh, New York Liberty. It's either Brianna Stewart, she played for the New York Liberty. Both of them, that's the power forward in the center. Um, Asia Wilson, the power forward. Uh, what is it? Alyssa Thomas. Like you sit here like any, and she didn't win, but um, this is somebody who's always consistently in the conversation. And I think that is one of the chips that connect the Connecticut Sun play with. It's almost like I hear a lot of people use that term. They always have been the bridesmaid, never the bride because they literally, oh, they get there or they always a contender, but they kind of, I guess, run out of gas when it comes to playing the Liberty or playing the aces where they kind of just like, you are elite dominant over everybody else, but when it's time to play the other elite teams, you kind of wet the bed. So that is one of the humps that the Connecticut Sun will have to get over this year, and even for Alyssa Thomas. I think, I mean, of course, realistically, Asia Wilson probably is in a conversation for herself, by herself, in that MVP conversation, but you can see certain people kind of trying to make their case for it if you're just going off of standards. And I think that's where people get frustrated even when you're hearing a rookie conversation where people was like, all right, well, this is going to be who, what's the standards then? Because they really just don't want to kind of just make it a stats thing. And I think that you don't want to make it a stats thing because it's like, because, and I say this, and I, and I think this will trigger a lot of people. I feel like Caitlin caught kind of know, like, I can't just go scoring because that's not going to be my strong point right now. So me chasing the passing thing, because you think about it, somebody sold you on Steph Curry and now you're getting John Stockton. Just think about that's the, that was the selling point. Go leading up to her, even in college. Oh, this is the female Steph Curry. I'm not getting the female Steph Curry right now. I'm getting John Stockton. You're passing the hell out of that ball right now. You're trying to chase triple doubles like Jason Kidd. Are you Jason Kidd and John Stockton and nowhere near Steph Curry at this point? So when you're getting 
that person is it, it, it kind of water it down. So now you're trying to put it into a stand. And so it's like, and let's be clear. I, I think realistically, if we being honest, if you actually watch enough games, I'm not I'm gonna lean on towards that. Chicago probably gonna have a better record. So that kind of don't matter. But it's like, how do you sit here and make it a standing thing when it comes to the rookie conversation? But you don't want to make it for the MVP because I do think most people feel like Asia Wilson got robbed last year of her MVP when Breonna Stewart won. And that's what, again, when I'm talking about the people that Angel Reese got a battle every day, like every game is literally a Hall of Famer. The MVP is a champion. It's a finals MVP. Like those are the people that she has to guard. And those are the people who uh, got her, like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Aneka Gumake. I believe her sister, I mean, well, I know, believe I know for a fact, her sister is uh, the young lady, uh, I want to say it's, it's Chene Agumake, and she worked on ESPN. She does the NBA, she do the WNBA uh, countdown. She also did do the NBA countdown with uh, Richard Jefferson and, um, and all of them. So let's be clear. I do think these people are elite, like Olympians and champions. She's not God and like no scrubs. Like, let's be clear. Like, just think about who you have to battle, like, Let's even say for the Liberty. Let's use for the Liberty, for example. Like, it's a difference between, like, and this ain't no shade to uh, Sabrina, but Sabrina ain't won nothing yet. But Brianna Stewart is a Hall of Famer. Like, Brianna Stewart can sit here and say tomorrow and say, hey, I'm cool, I'm going to retire. She's already a champion, and she's already a Hall of Famer. So that's not up, like, that's not up for debate. Like, but that's who Angel Reese got to battle with. It's like, all right, for Kaylin, you got to battle Sabrina. She ain't won shit. So what are we talking about? So it's just like, it's kind of like, and you can do that for every team. It's like outside of Seattle, because Seattle got some champions on their team, but outside of them, it's like, all right, bro. Like they don't like, even if you talk about, let's go to the Sparks. Like, I don't even know who to compare. Like they got, all right, I, like, I guess the most familiar person that people may know is Lexi Brown. It's not no shade to Lexi. Cause I love, love Lexi, but she ain't won nothing in the W Neva. So her comp, if, if I'm sitting here, if I'm, if you're some of the two rookies, who do I got to check? Who checking me? All right, it's Lexi Brown checking Caitlin Clark, and then Angel Reese is battling Derek Hamby. If y'all didn't see that game against the only team that seemed like the, the Sparks can beat is the Aces, and they beat them again. And Derek Hamby went crazy. I believe she had like 28 and 10 against Asia Wilson. And she used, and for people who didn't know, she used to play for the Sparks. She ended up getting cut. I think they ended up cutting her or trading her away so they can make room for Candace Parker. I didn't know that, T. Like, I didn't necessarily, and that's again, that's why I think sometimes, even if you're watching just becoming a new WNBA fan, you do kind of have to just go down the rabbit hole on Twitter and look at people who've been following the game a minute just so you can be familiar. Cause I wouldn't want to watch nothing. It's almost like watching a TV show and then you literally just come in on episode five. You don't know what happened in episode four, two or three. Like you can't be in a loop. I am out the loop that much. And I even watched the journal Amazon prime. It was, it's basically, it's a, it's a 2020 documentary. Of course, we all know that was when the shutdown was and they played in the bubble. And, but this was the, uh, Atlanta dream, how they strong armed and, and got the, uh, the, one of the owners out because she was running for like office or something, but she was like against everything. She was like, uh, she was against abortion. She was against gay rights. And of course, let's be real. 90% of the women, especially at that time in the WNBA, where most of them was LGBTQ community, whatever the case may be. So they kind of like, bro, how you own a team and you don't, you, you against gay marriage and you against this, that, and the third. And like 90% of your players on your team are gay women who are married or trying to have kids. So all the stuff that they stood for, she went against. So they, man, they, I swear you have, if you are, even if you're not even a fan of the WNBA, if you just like a, a great documentary, that journal Amazon Prime, I believe it's called, uh, what the hell is that John Cole? I just watched it. Oh my God. I can't believe I can't remember. I want to say it's all in the dream or something like that. Oh, let me, I want to, let me, I want to just give it to you. Absolutely. The right way. I want to say is it, it may be all in the dream. Is that what it's called? Uh, it's something in the dream. I can't, I, I don't want to take up too much time looking for, it, but it's on Amazon prime. It's a, I'm talking about this John. Like this made me love Sue bird. Like I, cause I look again, I'm a new WMA. So I ain't really seen Sue bird play before enough. And I just heard the name. I'm familiar with the name. Cause she's super popular. And she was, she was really like that. But watching the documentary, this is a white woman. She was so in depth on we're talking about the Joy Floyd issues or whatever the case, like she was rocking and rolling for the black community. So when you get to see some of those players and now you, you get to see why so many people speak so highly of her and why she was just like who she was. And then talking about even with Aneka Gumake, she is one of the, uh, she's the president of the, um this what is it, the CBA, whatever, the, what's the, what's the player's situation, whatever Chris Paul is for the, um 
for the women, I mean, for the men. She is that for the WNBA. So, like, just seeing all those things, it made it cool. And it, it was, I was like, damn, I really like this. I appreciate it. But going back into the standings real quick, and then we can kind of, uh, what, Minnesota is number three. Minnesota is 15 and six. And Minnesota kind of been losing games. They had no business losing. And that is one of the things you see in the W on the regular. Number four is the Seattle Storm. They are 14 and seven. And then I mean, the Vegas Aces is five, and they are 13 and seven. The, the Phoenix Mercury is 11 and 10. Indiana is nine and 13, and they are number seven right now and at the eighth spot it is eight and twelve is chicago and number nine is atlanta seven and thirteen so realistically you kind of can sit here and say the the la sparks the mystics excuse me in the dallas wing all three of them is kind of they out of it that's pretty much because atlanta could still catch some winning games or whatever case may be and find a way to play their way back into it because they're not too far away from Chicago or from Indiana. But that is what it is. And again, going back to the just, I guess, the biggest part of this whole conversation was supposed to be just the Angel Reese uh, celebration. And you do, uh, you have to give, you, bro, you got to give her credit. Because she's slowly but surely, if you're watching, especially if you're talking about this month, she's averaging like 18. And I think that's where it's going to get a little bit crazy and people kind of just like, you're trying to find ways to discredit what she got going on because you can see the constant uptick, like that game against Seattle on Friday, bro. She had 27 and what was it? 10 bro, 27 points. Like she was literally shooting for him to three. I had a joke on the joke with OD viral, or like all platforms, like men lie, women lie. But Angel Reese was letting that three fly. And I was like, bro, as a fan, you watching when you see her hit the first corner three, you was like, holy shit. Angel Reese just hit a three. The first joke was kind of like you so in shock because that's just not her bag. And then it kind of, it's Mitty, and I was like, oh, hold on. She may really be in her bag today. And that's what I'm sitting here saying. And that's the thing. And I guess we can lead it into this. And I think that's why people got frustrated. And I think maybe that's even why Teresa Weatherspoon played her so much from on Sunday's game. because She played the whole 40 minutes, and that was kind of ridiculous. And she's sitting down with Camilla Cardoso. We're going to get to that in a second. Let's go right back to Friday. But when she hit the Mitty, and then it was just like, oh, okay, the next time she at the top of the key, and they kind of playing her off. And she's like, oh, y'all just gonna give it to me. I'm gonna hit this low. I'm gonna hit the, I'm in the top of the key three. Wow. Oh my God. I'm like, hold, I'm just threw my phone in the air. Like, I can't believe it. She going crazy. And you just bugging out because it's, that's not her game. But I think, again, that's why people get so excited about her because it's literally the underdog story. You can arguably, most people on social media right now saying she's probably the most hated athlete in America right now. Like, literally in sports America, like, we have people like, I don't necessarily know if you've seen people just, straight hatred like I, and i'm sure like and I, that's why i know the pages like the sports pages is using her for like it's almost clickbait purposes because it's like go look at any even when they just post caitlin clock by herself it don't get as much engagement as if it's an angel Reese post because it's you like i said you will get all the bots you can get just the endless hate and then you're gonna get people defending her and like i said so you when you see that it's almost like holy shit so she had 27 and 10 it's like bro you ain't supposed to be playing this crazy because it's almost like, of course, I'm sure, like I said, if you really are a fan, most people, you make the comparison because you can see the quickness on her feet quickness where you kind of be like, oh, you can see if she can get a mid-range game, if she can get foot close and get more confident in shooting the three, you can see the comparisons of where you will compare her to being a mini Asia Wilson. So when you see that, it's just like, oh, you can see the game just really developing in your face and nobody's thinking of, oh, Angel Reese is about to give up 27. That's not like you thinking like, okay, she's cool to double doubles. You tell me, all right, maybe 14 and 14 or 11 and 12. What just some of the smaller jumps? But when it's just getting like that grown one aggressiveness where it's like 27 points, dog. Like even the night before when they beat the dream, bro, she had what she had. I believe she had 11 points and 19 rebounds. Like 19 rebounds is OD. And <laughs> like, listen to it. Like, it's so crazy to be like, and when she doing it, and then like the stat line, you listening to the broadcast, like, and I like the Atlanta Dream broadcast, and he's like, holy shit, she got. Yeah, of course he ain't say holy shit, but when it comes to his recognition that she got like at that time, she made like 16 boards and she's like, damn, she got 16 already because she do it so effortless. You kind of almost not even paying attention to how many she grabbing. And it's like, oh, all right, well, it's kind of like you, it's more easy to count the points than it is the rebounds because you look up and you're like, damn, she already got this many rebounds. So again, when I'm talking about how just dominant and amazing her game is, it's like, you just got to get credit where credit is due, dog. It's just, it's it's hard to keep denying it. But like, like I said, if you don't watch it and you just literally going off the narrative that they tell you, oh, she getting them off her own misses. Like I felt, I, to me personally, I was like, oh, yeah, you, it's no way you can still have that conversation after the Friday game. But uh, people, again, that's why I know it's going to be real people. And you can't, you, if you're going to, especially if you're going to create content, and I always say this, you can't get in your feelings about people's opinion in the comment section because like most people may just not watch it. Like I seen a dude, Right in my tone, like, oh, you really watch the WNBA? I'm like, nigga, fan do work, right? 
you can go in this game and bet. So I'm not supposed to make money during the summertime or I'm supposed to bet on baseball. I don't watch baseball. I'm hey, can you see me? I made N I G G A. What the hell are you talking about? I'm not watching baseball. So what the fuck else do you want me to bet on? Or you just want me to wait until football season? Yeah, right, nigga. Eat a dick. So I'm going to sit here and bet on these WNBA games. I'm going to watch. I'm not about to just randomly just throw my money away and don't know what I'm talking about or who I'm betting on. Like that's stupid. So anyway, like I said, moving on. She had a crazy game on for what was that Friday? That was yeah, Friday. No, that wasn't Friday. That was Wednesday or Thursday. I can't when they played the dream and then playing Seattle. Like, bro, them was grown women, crazy OD stat lines. So her breaking the Candace Parker 12 game straight double doubles, and now she got 13. And realistically, if you're watching the games, it kind of like I said, she almost on what was that yesterday game, Sunday, when they played Seattle, it was almost effortless. Like, bro, she almost had a double double at halftime. And that goes into a lot of people's beef with uh Teresa Weatherspoon. <laughs> Excuse me, and I and you see a lot of people get like, oh, Teresa Weatherspoon, she just playing favorites or whatever the case may be. She just too hung up on uh, Angel Reese, and I think a lot of people say that because you see, if you're watching just the um the, the after the game, the post game interview was like it was the game from Friday, and you just see Angel. It's like different little moments in the interview where you see Kennedy Carter leaning her head on Teresa Weatherspoon, and she wrap, wrapping her arm around them, just like almost like her daughters, like she, you know, what I'm saying like just that after, like that mom that motherly love. If you're watching the broadcast and they having the moments and you see the moments even going viral on social media and it's just pictures and whatever the case may be. And both of them just laying their head on her shoulder and they just smiling. And it's just literally so people are like, oh, she paying favoritism. Like, and I, let's be clear. I don't I didn't agree. I'm just like everybody else on social media. I didn't understand how you damn near sit Camilla Cardosa down almost damn near the whole second half, especially the fourth quarter. She didn't touch the floor in the fourth quarter at all. She barely played in the third. I think like just the very beginning, like oh, she missed a huge, significant amount of time, I believe. I want to say they said she missed like 16 minutes in the second half and they literally the quarters is ain't nothing but 10 minutes each quarter. So you basically sitting here saying she damn near missed the whole entire second half. She played four minutes. That didn't make no sense. And I get it. She tried to say, oh, Izzy had it going. But yeah, it kind of like, and let's be clear. I love the way Izzy played. Like, and I get it. Even the way they trying to stretch the floor a lot. And I seen people even complaining, like they didn't like Angel Reese playing so far away from the basket. Um, I get why they're doing it because if Camilla's in there, you kind of want Camilla to be able to work. You don't want it to be easy for people to double team. Like both of them just literally clogging up the paint. It's too easy to double team them. If you look at a lot of their highlights, like it's always two people around them. So kind of stretching the floor a lot more. And like I said, the more, the more consistent Angel Reese gets with shooting those jumpers in the mid range and shooting the threes, it'll be a hundred times easier for Camilla to be able to dominate because nobody ain't going to really check her one-on-one. But let's be clear. Most teams in the WNBA have that same to that two situation like let's go to Atlanta like they got Bree Jones she is the bigger body she's bigger than Alyssa Thomas where or even just like uh the Indiana Fever they got uh Aaliyah Boston and they got what's my girl name who date uh Dejanae uh last name Smith I can't remember I think it's Alyssa Smith yeah Alyssa Smith they like okay you just look at the size comparison it's not too many like like OD bigs where it's like even with Seattle they got the young lady I can't oh my god it's like Izzy something I can't I can't oh, I can't remember her name but she nigga she had a block body two nights in a row Friday she went crazy she had like eight blocks on Friday I can't remember what her name is because I seen a lot of people saying she was an all star snub but I didn't believe it until I seen that game on Friday I'm like bro she had eight blocks it's OD but so most teams got it they have a super tall center and then they got a like a finesse power forward where the, the power forward got some size but not as big as the center so like i said i like i get it and i do think realistically i see the where uh teresa weatherspoon want to go but it may not just be there yet i'm i like i said again i truly with everybody on social i'm not with the oh they lose they fire like come on dog relax it was one bad coach in joan and you can i mean i'm sure you can question a lot of her coaching rotations i think that's people's biggest beef with coach weatherspoon is her rotations. Her rotations suck, but the rotations only can suck because of what you got. Like, what do you actually want? Like, you can see glimpses and moments of each player that she tries to play. Like, they've all had their moments, like from Diamond to Shields or Dana Evans. Like, they all had different little moments in this season where they kind of look Oh, like it looked cool. Like it looked good. Like I'm not mad at it. But then it's like they had it moments where they wet the bed and you be like, bro, why is she in it? Like Dana Evans on, on Sunday, like, bro, Angel Reese literally 
uh, a neck fell on the ground. She literally like throwing her hands up, doing jumping jacks. I'm like, bro, nobody should have to do jumping jacks in a paint for you to realize to pass the ball. Because then when they're doing that, now the other defenders see it too. So soon now you're trying to force the ball and then you threw it literally over the girl head and hit almost the top of the backboard. Like that was so crazy. And literally as soon as she do it, did it. I'm not mad at whoever spoon, uh, Coach Spoon, because she took Dana Evans right out. But at that point, Dana shouldn't even have been in the game. And I think that was one of those things where you can't like, and I get it when most, especially when people, if you've been a super fan of the WNBA and you understand how easy it is for players to get cut. And most people don't want to see people get cut because you may like, you got some type of fan them to you or people just understand how hard it is to make the league. But bro, when you see it, it's kind of like, all right, dog, I've seen this from Dana Evan too many times. I've been saying this since preseason because you can tell where it's just like, she go out her way not to pass Angel Reese the ball. So that's the kind of the part where it's like, it looked like hating. If you're watching the game and like nobody don't want to, you don't want to come out and say it because I'm sure the difference between Angel Reese fans and even old girl fans for the fever is like, the Fever fans are calling out. They don't care. Fire the coach. Get rid of Leah Boss. Get rid of all. Like, they don't care. They're going to drag it to hell because that's their girl and they're going to ride for her. Where Chicago Sky fans is kind of like, all right, we don't want to be that corny. So we kind of not going to sit here and call out certain things. So you see it and just be like, all right, dog. But then you, it's like, to this point, it was like, bro, we 20 games in now. We didn't see this Dana Evans. This one was just ridiculous. It was like, nobody can miss this one. Like, everybody's seen this level of just like, bro, you was just basically hating and didn't want to pass this girl the ball until you had no choice but to pass it. And then when you pass it, it was just, uh, uh, come on, dog. Like, what the hell are we doing? So, again, like I said, that was the biggest takeaway from Sunday's game. It, w- it was a nasty one, but you can't be mad. They, had, they got two W's back to back. They beat the Dream. They beat, the, uh, they beat Seattle on Friday. And like I said, it was a great game. And shout out to Kennedy Carter. And you can kind of see, I think, one of the things, it was just a bad adjustment from Chicago. You were still trying to, what was working on Friday? It wasn't working on Sunday. Like Kennedy Carter didn't have it going. She even she had 21 points, but she was forcing them. Like it didn't that didn't come as effortless. It didn't come as smooth and just like, oh, she just getting to the rack and just doing her thing. It didn't look the same. Like Friday game and Sunday game looked like two completely different games. So it was just like I, I think that was a horrible um it just wasn't a good switch. Like, like that's the only thing I can, again, I can, if you sit here saying flaws and Coach Witherspoon's coaching ability or what she got, her game plan, or what she got going on, that would be, to me, the biggest thing. Like, dog, you kind of just, like, you was forcing, you was trying to make what worked Friday work on Sunday, and it didn't happen like that. And I guess that's kind of almost like playoff-style basketball. You got to be able to know how to make adjustments soon on the fly like you playing this team back to back and it's gonna come with the same thing they about to play the liberty back to back like you can't not sit here if you win the first game the second game you're gonna have to make some adjustments that same thing is not going to work twice you're not gonna be one of the things when i used to play mad with my older cousin he always used to say that you can't keep going to the well one too many times because if i know you're gonna keep going to the tight end across the middle i'm eventually pick it off you might get me 10 times but that one time i get it and i run it back for a pick six it's going to hurt more than all the 10 times that you consistently kept going to that play across the middle so i mean like i said again shout out to angel reese third breaking candace parker's 13 double doubles bro that's insane and you got to think about it and, and candace parker's was the 12 was like two can see like it was two seasons so it was like it went from like six one season and then literally it just rolled over into the next season so the end of the one season it went from six games okay she, she had double doubles and then the very next season she picked it right back up with six so they had 12 angel reese is literally doing this in her rookie season again this is the seventh pick bro think about how many people got drafted before her and you don't even talk about them I, like i see a lot of people trying to like almost and it's not i'm not want to say force because i do like rock uh Raquel Jackson's, um, I like her game. It's smooth. I ain't gonna hold you. Like she gets to the basket real easy. Like her, her mid, her mid range game is super smooth. Like I see people comparing it to like a Carmelo type of vibe. Like she, I like her. So I'm not going, I don't want to sit here and throw shade on her, but it, it took a minute for her to get here. Like you, it took 20 games literally, but cool. Angel Reese, I've been doing this double, double thing for 13 games in a row now, dog. So like, don't sit here and try to throw this one miscellaneous of a rookie in it to just try to make it a conversation. And I do one thing that can I say, dear black women who watch the WNBA, stop using K Martin is like how what y'all get mad at white people and white people be like, oh, I got this, this is my black friend. Like that's what y'all do with Kate Martin because y'all don't like the other girl. You still trying to make it like, oh, well this one Iowa player, we love her. Look at her. She's the... He's so cool. The Las Vegas Aces is like, bro, stop it. Anybody with common sense, see what y'all doing. This girl barely get in the game. She barely do anything. She, come on, dog. Stop what y'all doing. I get what you're trying to do, but you don't have to do it. Like, bro, you can just let this girl 
get the fuck come on so like let's be serious i even seen a post where she said i don't know where she did an interview at, but she like bro when i came to the i didn't think i was gonna have fans and shout out to her i like the name of her jones they called the martinis it plays a cool name play on her on her last name the same way with angel reese doing the um the reese's pieces and of course i think if you if we didn't talk about it last week angel reese has and even tm when tmz sports it was more than just like some twitter back and forth people just making up things and hypotheticals angel reese is in conversations with hershey's hershey's is the owner of reese pieces so i do it would be an amazing accomplishment for her and a huge endorsement probably one of her biggest endorsements if she can lock in and seal that endorsement to be able to put that one down i'm sure listen to out of all her things that she got endorsement because a lot of those things may be pricey like people may not got bread for the beats by dre or whatever it may be but trust and believe if you get some candy my nigga, them things will fly off the shelf. I can guarantee you, you get you some Reese pieces and you got Angel Reese on the on the box and on the plastic. I'm 100 percent positive those things will sell out without a shadow of a doubt. So, again, breaking that Candace Parker record and getting th bro, that's crazy. Like, bro, Candace Parker is one of those people that people call the, gate, uh, the goat. And let's be clear. Can Asia Wilson become the walking goat? Absolutely. She get because. Candace Parker has three championships, but we can all be realistically. She didn't do nothing to kind of earn the one last year. She didn't play for the Aces. She didn't play in the championship game. She was hurt. So she got three championships, but one of them jumps, we got to put an asterisk by it if we keep it in the buck. Now, if Asia Wilson can sit here and say, I got three championships and I got two finals MVPs, yeah, it's going to kind of like make that conversation with her and Candace Parker get very like, it's going to be different. You're going to have to be honest. It's going to get different. And I don't think realistically... <clears throat> Can Asia Wilson pull one of those moves that Candace Parker pulled later on in her career? Of course she can. When she get a little bit old in her game, slow down, could you see her sitting here saying, oh, let me just go steal another ring and then maybe like her fourth or her fifth one and I can just go play with one of the younger players or I can go play with Aaliyah Boston or I can go play with uh, Angel Reese and get me one to just like on my farewell tour. So you've seen people do it. You've seen NBA players try to do it. All of them can't do it. Carmelo tried it. It ain't work. Chris Paul tried it. It ain't work. But I'm sure for some people it will work. For Asia Wilson, it probably will work. If she don't want to just retire as a Las Vegas Aces, and she may because she did just break the record. She's the all-time scorer um, for that team. And that lead, and I think they used to be a team in Utah, then they went to the San Antonio, and now they 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 kept, they're still the same, I guess. You know, well, it's a new owner now. They own it, but they still built that little situation. Like, it's still the same team. It just went from different cities. So, man, again, like I I said shout out to uh asia wilson the all-star game and i did see somebody oh i can't remember who it was it was maybe like it was, it was one of those older white dudes who used to work at espn i don't believe they did no more i can't remember what show i remember him from but he did have a hot take that may not be as hot because the, the nba all-star game has of course lost this luster and he had a crazy take where he was like no the WNBA this season their all-star game nine times out of ten will have way more viewers than the nba I think they got the timing right now because that was one of the things that people was complaining about last year. Like, dog, how do y'all complain about viewership? And like, I think they had like their three-point contest and stuff. Like, like literally like 11 a.m. Like, nigga, who on a Saturday? Like, nigga, who gonna watch? Like, nobody's watching this shit. How did you do that? But like you said, I think, I do think his take was, hey, the WNBA will have more viewers this year than the NBA's All-Star Game. I don't think that's a hot take. It sounds like a hot take, but if we keeping it a buck, it, nine times out of 10, it probably will. So again, like I said, we have, I believe what is this week eight in the WNBA? It's gonna be a good one. They go, of course, they do go on their All Star or Olympic break next week. So I think it's, yeah, it's only a few more games. Meg, I think most teams only got maybe like three or four more games before the All Star break. So next week, but again, what's the game? What is the All Star game? July twentieth, I believe. It's the it's either the twentieth or the twenty seventh. I can't really remember off the top of my head. Um, if I could probably speed it up, when the All Star break uh, is that? July. Yeah, so the last games is yeah, July 17th. So yeah, I think the All-Star Jones is like July 20th or something like that. July 20 something. So again, like I said, man, this was a yeah, we we'll see. We will see. I, I don't I don't think it's no real, I guess, more debating towards that how it's gonna play out, but it will play out. We will see who eventually will get the rookie of the year, who'll get the MVP. And I mean, if you if are a fan of some one of the older teams, I'm sure you have some type of championship aspirations for your team. And if you if you new here, of course, I'm, I'm gonna close it out on this one and we're just gonna get into the regular podcast now, get into all the hot topics and all the stuff that's going on this week. So just give me a second. Let me let me let this let this air 